pussy nigga Oh nine and next to see nigga Fuck with me dog Pull up on the scene of some luxury dog That's me and my Kobe yeah 24 and my clothes is real Iceberg fuck the diamond yeah And that lake shit like Xavier It's that Juan Carlos and Javier Roll coat trade off the boat I'm a fly nigga took a wing off Married to the game took my ring off That's me we can have a bling off Throw the auto tune on have a sing off If the pussy ain't mine and I speed off It's I don't even fuck with hoes rather beat off No lotion tips got the potion Fuck the commotion I'm out in the ocean A nigga in motion all this devotion Got a nigga up in his piss like he floating Go Happy Labor Day and thank you for watching the A24 Podcast. I am your host, the Pope Chuck Paul, a.k.a. the Innovator of Ignorance. So, I hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. I hope you were safe. hope you were family, enjoying yourself, social distancing. I know it's kind of hard to do that when the weather is really nice outside, but at, at least just be safe and take care of yourself. So, it's kind of a thing of mine where I go on Facebook sometimes, I might go on like the CNN, um, on the CNN page, comment on their posts, NBC News, Fox News, WPIX 11 News, and I just like going after racists, because a lot of them say some of the dumbest shit. Racists be like, oh, I'm not going to use um, a chalkboard because it's black, and I, I, I don't want to use white chalk. I know. Bad analogy, bad terminology, whatever, but I have better ones that have actually been said. So, there was uh, armed robbery um, in New York City recently. Well, it's plenty of armed robberies going all over the cross country, but this one in particular. The suspect is captured on camera. He's wearing a hoodie. Someone in the comments goes, I blame LeBron James. He started this hoodie movement. Sometimes I just want to know, like, I know common sense ain't too common, but where do people get these things from? You know what I'm saying? These same people are upset with people who murder for no reason. You know, like, yeah, we all we all dislike murderers. No one likes a murderer. But these are the same people applauding someone for running people over with their car. That's murder. I also believe they had a permit for their protest because like when you want to go about it the right way you get a permit they had a permit I also read police told this driver do not go this way there is a protest going on you should take this way this particular person still went down that 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 street and ran people over I just hit the murder so I comment on there, on this particular post, and I say, you know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I'm quite sure pedestrians have the right of way. But what do I know? Then someone just comments right behind me, where did you learn to drive? There's a thing called right of way. The pedestrians always have the right of way. I'm like, bitch, what the fuck I just said? <laughs> It's like, I don't know if you probably just see my black face and just want to, it was just angry about it and want to comment. I don't know. People get upset about people protesting. Say protest peacefully. Excuse me. There was a peaceful protest four years ago by Kaepernick. Y'all ain't like that. Hell, matter of fact, you can go on the history of books that y'all wrote and check out the Boston Tea Party. That was a protest. I don't know if it was peaceful. Hmm. Whatever, man. I don't know. Also, this past weekend, there was a, a boat rally for President Trump that is, um, you know, is, is, I'm not going to say followers, but, you know, yeah, his followers <laughs> put together. Allegedly, plenty of boats sank in the ocean, whatever. I don't see the purpose of a boat rally. Like, how does that support him? The same way that the caravan rally in Portland, then they went down and was beefing with actual peaceful protesters. I just don't understand the, log the logic. 
President Trump said some things about some veterans and soldiers, allegedly, calling them suckers and things of that nature. But we do know for a fact that he definitely said things about John McCain. He said, I like my heroes who aren't captured. Like soldiers don't get captured and become POWs all the time. People say, he never said anything bad about any veterans. How about the... Um, the Indian soldier he had some some words some words about, or the other um, fallen soldier who like who he told his wife well he knew what he was getting into. And it's funny because when you toss shit back at someone who threw shit at you first, they're like, why would you do that? That's like if something happens to an officer and you say hey, you know what they signed up for. So. Racist, I would like you all to try to use a lot more common sense. Um, do more research. Read before you tweet. Because some of y'all just be going off the handles, just saying all types of dumb shit. You can't say someone is using self-defense when the gun was illegal. And then I would have to hold the gun. <sighs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. It's madness. It's just madness. Speaking of madness, this past Sunday, Power, book two. <sighs> I know, we've been waiting for something to take up time, take, take up our Sundays. You know, it's only been a week or two since the shy finished. But I will tell you this. I am surprised that this first episode was this fucking good. You got Tasha returning. You got Tariq returning. You got Grandma returning. You got Baby Girl returning. You got Cooper Sacks returning. You got, uh, I believe her name was Tamika, the other um, lawyer on the force. Um, pretty much you have a lot of the, the core cast from the first power in there. But let me just, I'm, look, I'm about to give you all some motherfucking spoilers. I don't care. Today's Monday, you should have watched it yesterday, you should have watched it at 12 a.m., you should have watched it at 10 p.m. I don't care. Here it goes. So it starts off with a couple of flashback, flashbacks leading up to when um, Tariq shot his father, Jamie St. Patrick, ghost. And then they, they show when um, Tasha was, um, she got arrested, they show her getting processed. Then it cuts to um, her lawyer, leaving it to Tamika, whatever. But you know what? I'll put it like this. She's the woman from the Dave Chappelle episode from When Keeping It Real Goes Wrong. If it's not really her, I don't know. She looked she look like her. But anyway, she's Tasha's lawyer. She brokers a deal where she would get about five months probation if she can tell them who really shot Ghost. Because forensics came, came back to the person had to be six feet to six two. She tried to blame it on Dre, but Dre had no gun residue on his clothing. When it happened. So, Tasha fired to me because she wasn't gonna, gonna say Tariq did it. So, she ends up getting a public offender. But on the outside, Tariq is like, finds out that his mother filed, fired the lawyer trying to find out who can he get who's slimy enough, but still good enough to get his mother off the hook without her telling the truth. This is where Method Man comes in. So, Tariq links up with his old boo from, from, um, the, from Cho, the school he used to go to, to get some drugs. Exchange some words or whatever. He gets some work. He doesn't pay her. I guess it's going to be on consignment. So, he takes the work. Boom. He meets up with Tasha's old employee at the daycare center. He used to be a stripper. He talks to her. She's about to start moving away for him so he can get the money to pay the lawyer. Now, I skipped a few things. Let me um, rewind back a little bit. So, Tariq is in a new school now. And the way he got in there is because um, the old white dude who was going back and forth with ghosts over the clubs. He used to go there. I think the school's called Steinfield. Yeah, Steinfield, like Stanford, whatever. Or well, Steinfield. He used to go there. So he vouched for Tariq. And I guess in exchange, when Tyreek graduates, he's gonna either sell him truth or cut him in or some kind of money deal. Whatever. Now, 
Tariq's old roommate, the old white boy, goes to Sty go to Stuyvesant too. What other school's going? He goes to that school too. So they, they reconnect, they're cool. Tariq's new roommate is a star basketball player for the school. He ends up having to tutor him. Also, he's trying to take some advanced classes so he can graduate in two years so he can get that money. So boom. Tariq ends up hanging out with his new roommate out of Southside Queens. He goes there, it's a big house um, house party um, for his roommate. You know, they're congratulating him for his scholarship or whatever. He's a star basketball player. And then Tariq starts finding out how gangster his family really is. A uh, little kerfuffle, or what, whatever um, y'all motherfucker be said. Well, a little fight ensues with the basketball player's cousin and some other dude. Turns out the basketball player's cousin some street nigga. And his mom is Mary J. Blige. And she turns out to be the motherfucking godmother of the hood. Dude is fighting. Mary J.'s son washes him up. Cops come. She pull a cop to the side. She talks to him. Blah, blah, blah. Obviously, she got the, she got the cops in the pocket. So she tells her son, like, you know he's going to come back. He's got to take care of that. All right. So... Dude comes back later on, he brings the hammer, pulls out, dude washes him up. Everybody goes and enjoys themselves. That's that. So boom, Tyreek gets the money now. But before he gives him the money, he goes on social media. He says, hey, thanks for this lawyer for taking my mom's case, blah, 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 blah. So now it's all over the place. Now the dude has no choice but to represent Tasha. So, he's representing Tasha now. So Tasha, after she went through her bullshit public offender, and they were trying to give her a 10 to 15, she still wouldn't, wouldn't say it was um, Tariq. So they're in court. Right before they're about to give her a new deal, five months probation, but still have to tell the, tell the truth. She's not going to tell the truth. I'm thinking she's going to say it's Cooper Sacks. Oh, hold on. Let me read real quick. They're trying to hit Tasha with the kingpin charge because she's trying to throw ghosts under, the, under the, the bus, being that he's dead. And being that he was part of the Democratic Party for such a short time, they don't want that mess coming out. So for that, you got to hit it with the kingpin charge. So, while they're trying to get Tasha to tell the truth, the irony, tell the truth, she says, Tommy killed him. They ask, well, how do you know that? She said, I told him to. That's when Cooper Sacks walks around, tells the judge, yo, we got some fish to fry. They arrest her on the spot, hit her with the kingpin charge. Met the man, tells Tariq, I need 450 G's now. Tariq hits him with the game like, yo, this is going to be the biggest case of your, of your, of your life, of your career, you're going to be famous, da 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 Then near the end credits, Mary J's son bodies homie that came to the house beefing. I probably left out a few things, but you know what? Go and watch it. The episode was too fucking fire. I just hope this first episode is as good as the next. I need it to be. I really do. And moving along from that. Yesterday, the Bucks almost went home. The series is 3-1 now, Miami leading. But... Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak, injured his ankle yesterday in the first quarter. The Bucks ended up winning, but can they still pull off this, I guess, upset now? Because, I mean, right now, like, the Heat is about to upset them. They're up 3-1. Can the Bucks win three more games without the reigning MVP and Defensive Player of the Year? I don't know, but I'll tell you this much. Giannis needs to get in the fucking gym. 
it's crazy because remember when Harden earlier earlier in the year said, well, I mean, I really have to learn how to play basketball. Like, I have to learn how to shoot and dribble and pass. Like, I can't just dunk all day. Some folks took offense to that, especially Giannis and even some um, NBA analysts. But then when you think about it right now, all they're saying is he needs to work on his jump shot, his post game. Hello. He's getting exposed two years in a row. Ray Allen is not walking through that locker room. Oscar Robertson is not putting on those jerseys anymore. Lou Alcindor is not coming to the game. Hell, big dog Glenn Robinson ain't walking through that locker room. They need to get it together. He to hit up Akeem Olajuwon, work on his post up, his fadeaway, all that shit. They letting him shoot threes. They letting him shoot threes. He comes to the paint, they're collapsing three, four guys on him. You know? And he's getting into foul trouble early. They're not going to win a championship that way. Does he leave? Does he stay? I don't know. Little Donovan Jones. That's how I harmonize that, right? Where else are you going to get that super Mac, that 200 plus million? At the end of the day, the buck starts with him and the buck stop with him. Can you imagine Giannis for post game like Elijah Moore? Footwork like Kobe. A jump shot, not even like K, like not even like KD. We'll say like KG or even Rashid Wallace. Unstoppable. Hell, give him handle like AD. Like, come on, something's gotta give. I'm not the biggest LeBron fan. I'm a Lakers fan, and I gave LeBron my hell when he when he was a, 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 a Cleveland Cavalier in the Miami Heat. You gotta do the same for Giannis. You gotta step it up. You can't be MVP two years in a row and get sent home in the second round two years in a row. It can't happen. So I don't know, like, if they lose tomorrow and the season is over, if he gotta go to Nigeria or Houston to highlight a king, he need to do something. Like, I don't know if, when the next season is going to start, but this fall, this winter break, or whatever the case may be, he needs to get on his shit. Because it just makes no damn sense at all. My Lakers did tie it up 1-1 with the Houston Rockets. The Clippers and the Nuggets are tied up. Nuggets came out shooting. Woo! Jamal Murray, Jokic. Kawhi did his thing as usual. Paul George. It's not looking like playoff P. More like pandemic P. And speaking of sports, before I let go, this Thursday the NFL is back. Will they finish their season? Will there any will there be any um COVID-19 stoppages? Will anyone get sick? Some teams may have fans. I don't know how that's going to work with the whole social distancing. Some teams are upset about that because they feel like it gives other teams a bigger advantage. You know, the extra momentum that boosts the fans, the, the, the crowd, the roaring, the noise, all that stuff. Some will, some may not. Who knows? More questions are, the Redskins have um, hired a new HNIC. We won't get to what that stands for because, you know, the climate we in, people will complain. Well, I can say it, God damn it. On the Washington football team, almost at the Redskins, the Washington football team. You coach, you GM, what are they going to do? Can they clean up the mess? All the sexual misconduct accusations. Dwayne, Has Dwayne Haskins is, is, is um, the starting quarterback. Giants should have gotten them. We'll see what happens. Is Cam going to do his thing on the Patriots? We don't know. 
is, is, is Psycho Tom gonna, gonna lead the Buccaneers to, to, to the Super Bowl? We gotta wait and see, you know? Are the Cleveland Browns gonna do anything? I mean, we got my man Odell Beckham over there. We got the quarterback with more commercials than motherfucking touchdowns. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll see, we'll see. Also, Tyler Perry is now officially a billionaire. And that's just a lot of motivation because he was doing this thing before social media. When you had to buy his Medea cassettes, his VHS tapes, his stage plays. He built that shit from the ground up. And I've been saying it for a while now. I think he wants to buy BET. He already has these crazy deals with them with like 10 shows on there. He's pushing their streaming app. That would be dope to see. Cause I don't know what Byron Allen doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, the weather channel. That's great. But Tyler Perry's a billionaire. It's great for the culture. Just the fact he shoots his own movies at, at his own soundstage. He writes everything, produces everything, directs everything. You may say he's a control freak, but hey, if you can do it yourself, why pay someone else to do it? Yes, I understand you can burn yourself out. But that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. You know, I probably had three reliable cinematographers. One passed away, RP my guy Brick. My guy Malik is doing bigger and better things right now. My homegirl Trina, she's in the Air Force. I had got other folks to, to you know, do some work with me, but they were un inconsistent. So seeing someone like Tyler Perry grab the bull by the horns and get his shit done his way is fucking dope. And I hope he buys BET from Viacom. And then bring Wild out on BET. <laughs> so yo, I'm gonna let y'all go. Enjoy your burgers, your potato salad, your glizzies with ketchup and mustard. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. This is the Pope Chuck Paul, the 824 Podcast. Peace out.